welcome to the second in the series of the APJRD Oxford Public Lectures. This afternoon, we are in conversation with Emeritus Professor Femi Oshofisa, renowned playwright and theatre critic, who has written over 75 plays and innumerable essays, published and unpublished. As the acting head of classics department between 2009 and 2014, I thought it was necessary to promote classics in the schools because there was a problem getting students to enroll into classics. So I thought the best way to do it was to stage the adaptation of the current Greek tragedy that was on the literature in English reading list. That year, it was women of or Shofison's adaptation of Trojan Women. So we had students from nearly all the high schools in Ibadan come to watch the twice-a-day performances at the Arts Theatre, now Walisha Inca Theatre, University of Ibadan, for six weeks without gate takings. It was hugely successful. Consequently, I suggested to Professor Shofison to adapt to Euclidus's idea but he was not enthusiastic about it because he couldn't find any parallel in the Yoruba culture, which, where a woman would maliciously kill her children. So it has taken over 10 years to prepare this play, which can be called an adaptation of the media of Euripides, or indeed a transfiguration of the Greek play effected by its being process through a consciousness informed by Yoruba history and culture. Although the playwright, consummate artist that he is, takes certain crucial liberties in his handling of both that history and culture. So we had five dramatized readings at different venues in town, and the experience has been gratifying. So here we are today at the University of Badon studio to hold this conversation on Midai, and to do so with me are Tunde Awosome, theater director, Benson Eluma, lecturer at the Institute of African Studies, University of Bada, and Professor Baba Goff of the University of Reading, who is participating virtually. So I will start off by asking the first question. Professor Oshofiso, when you adapt a Greek play as a launch pad for a dramatic exploration, does it ever bother you that the intertextual resonances or dissonances, as it were, between your own synthesis and the adopted original may be lost on your audience, both at home or ab and abroad? No, 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 uh, it doesn't uh, bother me at all. <laughs> uh, in fact, um, if uh, the original context uh, can be forgotten completely, uh, the, uh, that's my aim, you know. I, as I said, I'm rereading these um, uh, plays, um, I'm recreating, recreating the uh, Greek original and transferring it to a different context. So uh, I, if you don't know the original context, it's better for me. Although uh, if you do know it, maybe it enriches for you, for you to be able to make uh, contrast. But don't forget that also, I'm trying to deconstruct the Greek worldview. You know, I don't totally agree with the basic, um, tragic um, worldview. So I'm also doing that. I'm recreating the play, and also I'm trying to recover, rediscover, you know, the African uh, worldview too. So um, the original context of the in fact, it doesn't, uh, uh, for me, uh, matter in this, in this, in this issue. Okay, sir. Um, Media by Euripides is the third major play in your Greek interweaving dramatic project. Curiously, all the three are tragedies. Now, I know that your dramatic O is uh, replete with successful comedies, which prove that your creative competence in that genre is incontestable. Why then have the Greek comedies been so sidelined in your interviewing projects? <laughs> Why are you so fixated on well, Why not comedies? Well, because I'm, I'm not really, uh, I'm not really, what do I say, committed to doing only Greek plays, you know, <laughs> I do other plays. And maybe uh, it's just that I don't have had the time. Um, Aristophanes, for example, would be a good um, play to do. Uh, but uh, also don't forget that those plays are done mainly by commission, you know. 
they were commissioned. So nobody has commissioned uh, Aristophanes for me so far. Maybe if I live long enough. <laughs> uh, my next question centers on the on on our most recent project. On I've heard you treated your interaction with these Greek classical plays within the context of the interweaving performance cultures as some kind of impetus. I can't remember Tegmoni and Women of Old, for instance, the two earlier bits of that project being subjected to a grueling pre production rehearsal reading process, just that which Medaye has witnessed. Perhaps that rigor was structured into the technique of the play through the rehearsal motif, through the rehearsal motif, sorry as reflected in its title. It was an approach that was intentionally programmed to involve the audience as participatory creators in the dramaturgic process. And as a director, I must confess here that at a particular point in the course of the performance, I began to feel uncomfortable at what occurred to me as seeking validation for the play from spectators. Now in a certain interview with Mui Wawudi in 1978, you you actually disclosed that you are a playwright who desperately desires to get close to the spectators. Was that also a way of getting close to your audience? Do you think that those rehearsed readings have been able to serve that purpose? Are you satisfied that the extent of audience contribution during the exercises actually edified your vocation as a playwright generally, and particularly your craft as a dramaturg in the composition of Medai? There are so many questions. Um, well, uh, the rehearsal format, which I use, as I said, you know, um, comes from many, you know, many uh, points of view. Uh, for instance, I'm trying to recreate uh, African traditional format of performance, you know, uh, which is normally provided, you know, uh, uh, and uh, particularly against the proscenium, uh, the logic of the proscenium stage, you know. Um, so, uh, but most of the plays have also to be done in our context within the proscenium uh, uh, concept. So, I'm trying to deconstruct that. Uh, but that's one. Second thing is that, you know, getting the audience to exchange with me is really, uh, I think, uh, a beautiful uh, thing you know, because then the audience contributes, and I like that uh, kind of. Condition. I wasn't aware by the way that you were <laughs> you're comfortable at any point with this, you know. Um, but you can get the audience to bring in his own perspective, and that improves the play. You know, it expands the play, improves it. Uh, I mean, I, I like that anyway. Um, and uh, you will see that as we went on doing these readings from point to point, the play became richer and richer because of the kind of uh, exchange with the audience, you know, that we do. It's not just the audience, it's also the actors that just bring in something, the, and all of us are learning. I thought you two were learning, you know, because you were also uh, changing things as we went along. You know. Uh, that's, the, that's, the, that's the best format uh, I can think of, you know. uh, particularly in our context. Again, we don't have many uh, resources. Um, I know Grotowski has uh, theorized this into what he calls the poor theatre, but that's the context in which we have to operate. We don't have resources to build elaborate theaters, you know, buy costumes, buy, uh, you know, uh, all kinds of uh, uh <laughs> spectacular things for our theater. So we have to operate within that improvisational uh, format, you know. And each time the play builds them to that context, develops within that context, so that there are no hard and fast rules, hard and fast givings, and so on. And for me, that is, in fact, what makes for a good play. And I, I, I think, yes, you know, I would like to continue with it. I mean, this has always been my <laughs> format anyway, uh, what they call the experimental stage, you know. I, I think I love it. Uh, I think I gain from it, yeah.
So my next question would be, use drama to apprehend history and iconic texts, reworking familiar events and resituating historical figures. Medaille is no exception. What would you say about any about your metadramatic um, disruption of both history and the text on which your plays are based? Well, again, just as I've just said, uh, uh, the, the other format, improvisational uh, approach, all that, allows us to deconstruct givens, the, 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 the particularly the Greek tragic theater that we, we, are, we are working with. It. We recreating it, we reconstructing it, we deconstructing it, you know. So that's one. And then, you know, in terms of history, you know, for us particularly here, uh, we don't know no much of our history. Um, by, by situating this in the, the historical context, I'm trying to also teach us what our history is. But what our history is, is also not you know, settled. We have to question it. You know, because you know, the history of Bajale is what the rulers tell us what it is. You know. uh, but I also want to look at history from the other side, from the lower side, from the side of the, of the losers, you know, of the, of the, of the rich victims. No, how how would they interpret it? How how would this go? So it's a difficult thing because first of all, I'm trying to teach us that we have a history for people to look at that area of our of our life. You know, this is our history. But at the same time, I'm trying to tell us that we should not just accept what is being told. You know, we have to question it. We have to look at it from our own perspective as the underdogs and so on. You know. Uh, perhaps that uh, will uh, help us explain, in fact, where we are today, you know, if we look at this thing like that. So that's what will you know, make sure this, you know, I don't give uh, one orthodox uh, perspective or way of looking at it, you know, I question it. You know. Okay, thank you, Prof. So it's um, Barbara's turn to ask the next question to the leading lady, Thank you so much. I think you've touched on some of the um, points that, you know, the points I was going to question you about, because at the start of many of your plays, you have that meta theatrical moment where the actors talk as actors about the play they will perform. With Medai, you have that opening and an ending where the actors turn to the audience. But you've also had that new process of making the play via public readings. So I wondered if you were planning to share even more of the creative process with your audiences. And I guess if, if so, then um, if you can discuss the reasons and if not, if you can discuss the reasons. Well, you know, um, thank you for asking that question. Um, the fact that the audience uh, gets more involved now, I can show you that um, I myself are beginning to question that approach a bit. A bit. I'm trying to see before it gets to, to, to become you know, the cliche itself, you know, because uh, what is identified as uh, <laughs> a cliche of cultural you know, performance. You know. I'm trying to see how can I develop this? How can I uh, further change this um, without going to the other side of um, you know, recreating the orthodox approaches and so on? Uh, and so uh, the audience you know, are beginning to, to seek different ways of doing this, you know, a richer, way of, of doing this, which doesn't just become just a mechanical uh, way of, of performance. So you, 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 you see more of that, but um, different, in different uh, ways, you know, where, where I can uh, maybe, uh, you know, you know, alter, alter, alter 
it's uh, from just a uh, cliche. I, I hope you understand what I mean. Couldn't be, you're going to the ask another question. question? Okay, the next question from me. Did you insert the Buje Ijapa play within the play as a counterpoint to the Atikbo Medaye affair? Well, yes, maybe not the counter, but the parallel to it, you know. Okay. Um, because, you know, of the. Um, just sorry, this thing is just echoing in my head. I can't. Uh, you know. um, I, I hope you can hear me, Barbara. You know, I don't know. Uh, in any case, the two stories had to run parallel because I thought, um, you know, first of all, the Bouguer story that we have inherited it, it comes from our traditional uh, folklore. It's not my own. Uh, uh, making, but it's just the usual story of um, the proud girl who wants to be herself, then she's defeated by the forces of tradition. She's told, do this, do that, you know, and finally she succumbs, you know, I mean, she's tricked or bullied or thing into this, uh, you know, this uh, uh, surrender. Um, but again, you know, what does that tell us about uh, uh, traditional perspectives? So, the new raconteur, the narrator, the new questions this, you know, brings it to a different perspective. What happens to the woman, you know, when she's supposed to have given in? Does she just surrender? That's all. You know, what what can she do about this love, love, love that is forced on her? You know? um, so, I, so I bring in that other uh, uh, story, you know, in the end. The same thing, you know, you look at um, the story of Medai, you know, who revolts because she feels she's been betrayed. It's her love, 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 that's, she's so, she's so obsessed with this, you know, uh, and uh, she's, you know, uh, ready to sacrifice anything to it, including her own children, you know. Um, um, I mean, as you well said before, you know, this worried me quite a lot, you know, uh, until then we began to have incidents like that here, uh, with uh, mothers killing their children and so on, because I, uh, this, and I was beginning to think that maybe this is a new perspective that comes from uh, encounter with the West. You know, how we use our old traditional practice polygamy and uh, accepts many uh, women in the, in, the, in the household and it has its own uh, virtues and vices. But here is, we now come with monogamy. We are, uh, the, 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 the women are claiming the right to, to, to have their husbands to themselves, no other person, you know. Um, of course, you know, this comes from, there's an economic uh, uh, side to this, you know, the, the economic development of the society, you know. Uh, but I wasn't going to look at that, I was looking at the emotional side of it, from you know, perspective, you know. Um, what happens? How, do, how does it now collide uh, uh, with our own traditional uh, beliefs, you know. And I, I think maybe, I mean, at least some of the audience saw that. Uh, uh, I think uh, we, we haven't really got to a solution here, if we like. Mm -hmm. But at least it's good for us to look at that uh, tension, the new tension in our society. Now I see my diary as an attempt to make us understand that war at a level intrudes on private spaces with the of us as in this. And in this play, we find that the war intrudes on the marriage between Atiko and Medai, and I think that as a central theme of the play. So I would like to speak a bit more on this intrusion. How war becomes a test for the strength or fragility of human relationships. Well, you know, the nature of war, it is, 
intensifies all, you know, ev everything, you know, brings to this very uh, intense situation, all the things that are happening in society. You know. um, I mean, I haven't been in war myself, and I don't intend to be, uh, but, um, you know, from all the records, you know, uh, you can even think of yourself, yourself you know, what war does to societies, to families, to individuals, yeah. particularly the women and the children. Yeah. Um, so that context of war, you know, seems to bring all these things into a certain focus. Um, and then, you know, maybe through that we can see ourselves at the end, a closer, uh, who are we as human beings, you know, how do we, you know, our society, our lives, uh, how are they affected by, the, by this uh, situation of war. I also don't forget that the media itself was already a context of you know, uh, war, so was it that I was myself inventing that, you know, I, I just look for the parallel in our society here, that's all. You know. So I think that's it, you know, that war uh, does something that intensifies all the collisions uh, in society and uh, intensifies our passions, you know, the conflicts we have. You are still on war, sir. Uh, I've discovered that um, war is fast becoming a recurrent motif in your work. And I can cite examples from Moron Todun to women of who to reduce the freedom movement. And now we also have Medai. You know, and now uh, uh, war is always an exciting event to be eventified by a theater director. Do you want to want to comment on this? Well, you're right. But, um, well, the performance I mean, of I have to, uh, maybe I don't agree with you that it's because. I mean, you mentioned the number of my plays, but that's just a fraction of my plays. <laughs> in fact, before now, you know, the, the play before this wasn't about war. Uh, the one we just uh, finished uh, last year or something. This was Kenos. Yeah, Kenos, yeah. Uh, that we did, you know, it was, which we did in many parts of the world, you know. Um, it seems in trying to experiment with the with the with the with the form and with the uh, audience participation. Yes. You, know? uh, you remember that that the keynote is about uh, uh, African development we like the three women who in Ghana, you know, were part of the Nkrumah revolution and so on. You know? uh, so that was about war, you know. Um, and you know no, the comedies are not about war, but this just seems to be at least a, a certain motive that gives Philip to drama, you know, uh, the, the drama, drama uh, out of this terrible event of killing people, you know, uh, danger, instability, as you know. Um, so yeah, you know, I mean, I use it, but uh, I wouldn't say it's here. Yeah, I'm concerned on you know, that. It's not that come, yes. Possibly, <laughs> my next question connects Sorry. up to those <laughs> issues too. Um, in Medaille, many of the characters seem to conclude that the issues center around love, but then the plot in the end seems to be more driven by the men's political and the military goals. And I wondered if you'd like to say a bit more about that balance between the public and the private in your work. Well, as I said, you know, the, the, the context of war, you know, uh, brings out the best and the worst in us. So, uh, so only in that context will I see, you know. But the private and the public are always intermingling. You, know. you can't um, uh, separate them. You know. the, 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 the emotions you feel are intensified by the context of war. And when you are talking of drama, that's exactly what you need. Uh, 
So uh, I think that that's that sense that, but I mean, you know, the, the private and the public are always uh, mixing, even in ordinary affairs, and you can't you can't rule that out. You know. Um, I, I don't know whether I've answered your question, but that. Uh, there is the institution of the oath, the mechanism for secularizing human arrangements, which features as a recurrent theme in Greek tragedy. And you have deployed this adequately in Medai. Does the treatment of the oath in this place, that is Medea and Medai, bring the realm of the sacred into the realm of the profane, turning the practice into a public spectacle especially when an oath is broken as exigencies arise in the human situation and the force of the oath becomes an impediment to human action? Well, uh, the sacred, uh, the, uh, the sacred and the secular, well, I think that, you know, in this kind of society, the sacred is always a cover up. You know, is used as an uh, excuse to justify many things, not really to take it seriously at all. You know, um, when it's convenient, you bring up the you know the issue of uh, <laughs> religion and the oath and so, and then when it's not convenient for you, you get the same thing. You know, so that's it. But I, I've always found it a useful practical device anyway. The oath, issues of the oath, the, the, the trance, dance, you know, spectacle, you know, uh, magic, you know, it, you know, very compelling on stage. But what are the real intentions behind this? You know? Are we to believe or not to believe? Um, quite skeptical about this myself. You know. I think the oath is just like any other uh, thing in our society, um, an excuse for villainy, you know, for many times, you know, <laughs> just a cover up, <laughs> a mask for us to uh, have our intentions, you know, and then we are refugees when it's, when it's uh, convenient for you, you know. So that, that's my view of it. You know. okay. Now, still on the matter of, of oaths on the secret, I think that in the play, we'll find that um, the concept of the sacred is not problematic a bit. And then that is that, that happened because you seem to, so, so by instances of the sacred being transgressed. So there's that there's a balance between the sacred and then transgressions, and it creates a kind of tension. What do you mean for the attention between the sacred and then its transgressions, recording again and again, like the, the mitral vow between my Diana and that's broken. The concept of the sacredness of um, mother's love or or a children, it comes from this, and there is a piece of piece side by side. So what do you mean with that attention? No, that's exactly what I've said. I said it's when it's convenient you know, that we, we, we evoke the, the secret, you know, um, you know, the infallibility of, of the gods. You know. But I think the society is likely cynical, if you like. Uh, and you know, many people even take for Fakuma, for example, or where mm -hmm. you know, you, you have to do a lot of uh, <laughs> uh, what do you call it, divination mm -hmm. before going, you know, casting knots and finding out. And when he found that he didn't, didn't uh, go the way he wanted, you know, he used his own hands to change it to, to overturn. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I said, well, you know, I, I changed it myself. I went on his own destiny anyway. But um, if the if the if the if the, the nuts had been favorable, they would also have cited that. Oh yes, you know, this is, they asked me to to do this, you know, and I did. Uh, so that's my view, you know. That on the other hand, I don't know how we to describe this. Let's see. It's a, it's a really peculiar thing in a society, you know. We, we seem to pay a lot of respect and, um, you know, uh, credibility to oaths, 
to secret things, to uh, secret structures and all that. But at the same time, we have no qualms about um, jettisoning this where, where they don't, uh, where they don't um, uh, favor us. I think um, the Yoruba thing about um, Osani is probably the best way to go Osani, which is made of mud. That's in, if he doesn't tell you the right then you turn it to the rain. You know? so you just better be careful to tell you what you want to do to support you. But if he doesn't support you, then you, you know, you're going to die itself, you know, because it's a uh, Orisha rid of, uh, of mud. You know? So there's this tension between the two. Uh, between the two. Uh, she can do those, yes. Hmm? And transgressions. Yeah, transgressions. That deliberate transgression. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know how <laughs> to maybe it's a cynical society, you know. But that that that's my view too, you know, that should should allow uh, these secret things to hold you back. Uh, we don't do that. We don't allow this thing to hold us back. Maybe to support us, yes. You know, when we want to do something, you know, say yes, you know, the God to, you know. Yeah, for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Next question. Um, whether if it's a stereotype, you know, L act of like a mask on, she fits it, you know, and then gives her to kill her. But then she recognizes the point, the moment of what she adopts, that population. I don't see other scene quite conceived for. The tragic action of the mothers of our children. So, what was that scene playing in the play? What do you think? Which is seen when she recognizes, comes to realize the enormity of her action once a kid, attach a kid that children. Um, I think, you know, it's a, it's a, it, sh it should be a moment for you to actually, because uh, uh, it's a deep moment of pathos, you know. Uh, and um, I'm thinking, you know, whether uh, this is not the moment to question the idea of tragedy uh, in the Greek and in the Nigerian uh, Yoruba communities. Um, we just oppose when is tragedy? Uh, um, is it when you, you triumph and fail, or when you feel in trying at all. Mm -hmm. So um, so I, 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 I think I, I should leave it to the audience to, <laughs> to answer that question there. You know. mm -hmm. But you know, that, you know, I think it just triggers that kind of uh, um, questioning, as you, as you said. You know. OK, sir. Um, you are certainly one of the most culturally mobile African dramatists of your generation. Uh, and uh, you are a multiculturalist, you are a transculturalist, and you and and you you operate these across occidental and, and then oriental landscapes, uh, and during which you you romance with writers from Britain, Greece, Russia, France, China, and so on. This no doubt has assisted you to converge and at the same time diverge, both philosophically and aesthetically. What then can you say about the texture of the Greek classics in comparison with works of writers from other places that you have uh, that you have uh, actually interacted with? You know, the, I've been lucky. I've been lucky. I must say, um, the sense that, that I'm able to um, travel and uh, you know, uh, work in many parts of the world. And one of the things, fascinating things, you know, at least one of the things that have facilitated this ease of movement is the fact that actors are the same all over the world. You know, um, all the barriers of uh, culture and others, as you may think, when you get into a theater company, those barriers disappear. And the world of culture is, 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 is a 
transnational world. There is no barrier. Human beings basically have the same problems, um, the same concerns, you know. um, and, and, and the humanity that is present with actors is all over the world. I mean, you may get out of the stage and you meet uh, racism or anything, but you won't meet it among actors. You know, you may get out of the meet. Uh, I mean, beyond the usual human feelings, of course, I mean, envy, uh, anger, and we all have this. But what is there that is common to all of us? So, you know, if I, if I, if I get on stage in, uh, in Berlin or, or in um, Minnesota or, you know, I'm meeting the same people. So it's very easy for me. In fact, when you read the world literature, that's when you see that every, all this is cross barriers. There are no, no cultural barriers when you're dealing with humanity. Um, so it, it, it's very easy. So they, they, I don't, I mean, of course, it may be difficult in terms of expressiveness. For example, when I was in Sri Lanka, trying to get the actors to, to express themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, what their culture, their cultural stuff is different. They don't express themselves mm -hmm. that same way. Yeah. It's not that they don't express themselves, but not that same way. Not in that very visible, very uh, 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 tactile way or another, you know. And so I have to coach them that we are dealing with Africa and so on. This is how we do it, you know. Ah, you know, it's, so it's, that, that, that's all. That's not the problem, you know. It's just that the way of doing it may be different. But not that, why should we do it that way, you know. Um, um, I mean, there are all kinds of examples, but I don't need to go into that now in this uh, short interview. But that's what I mean, you know, that, you know, uh, in China or in, I'm dealing with human beings with the same perspective. And on stage, it's even easier to, to get a kind of solidarity I mean, among uh, uh, the workers there. Okay. So how do you manage a clash of idioms in the adapted place when you transpose Greek drama into an entirely different cultural framework, the Yoruba? Well, you know that for me it's also uh, a search. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to find out uh, cultural traditions. I'm also, you know, because Unfortunately, uh, colonialism has destroyed so many things here. And um, we are still going with this. Thing, so. so how, my, my, one of the questions I ask myself is, how did our people used to do this? Um, when, uh, you know, Aruko, for example, uh, how, how do, you know, that was a, a competition system, you know which we used. So I, I, you know, so I prefer to use that than just to, to use what our modern people are, are doing, you know. How, so I'm, I'm, I'm searching all the time. So it's an ex, ex, exciting uh, process for me, you know. And by that, I want the audience also to learn. Oh, this is how we used to do it. Doesn't mean that we must now continue to do that. We must return, you know. But our people, as Achebes, you know, said, you know, had their own logic, their own uh, ways of doing things. We're not, so we are not completely zero, as the colonialists came and, and taught us that we had no history, we had no culture at all until the encounter with the white people, you know. Um, you know that that was the prevailing history of the of the last century, you know. That's what we were taught. 
you know, Africa had no history until the white man came along. You know, so we had no culture, nothing. But we did, and uh, unfortunately, we've lost many of these. We've forgotten, you know. So, but how do we research? This? How do we then use it on stage so that we can see that there was, uh, you know, uh, a culture there. There was. Uh, so it's, uh, it's an exciting part of my own process, you know, where I'm, where 